Alright guys, got another video here for you. So many people have requested that I make a tutorial using uh, the ES2 because I do most of my tutorials all on Massive and for those Logic users that watch my videos who may not have Massive you know, they're kind of missing out. So I thought I'd listen to you guys and make one. Um, and another popular request is just showing you guys how to make a... Um, I'll give you some ideas or just show you how to make a... Um, a lead sound like a sort of a you know you can use it in electro house if you wanted to give it a bit more distortion or you could use it in progressive house with um, with less distortion and quite a lot of filter envelope so um, I'll just show you here what I've made sorry for the very sort of generic melody sound but um, here it is That was this. Alright, so here it is. Here's um, my ES2. And you can see at the top here I've got Ryan's default ES2. That's because when you load up the ES2, as you'll all probably know, it has that pretty boring crap sound. It's not actually like a normal, just a default patch. So what I recommend doing is, um, if you go over every single parameter on the ES2, and you hold Option and then click on it, it returns everything back to default. So that's why I, I've done that, and then I saved it. So that's you know, so it's my like my new default patch. For example, if I had this on 23, hold Option, click on it, brings it back to zero. So go along on every single knob, or fader, everything, and do that, and then that's what your preset is. Okay. So once you've done all that and you've got yourself your default patch, I'll show you what to do. Um, let's. Bring this down to minus 17. Another cool trick is I don't you don't know if you guys know it, but um, if you hold down Control and then click on Sign, oh, bring it on Sign, and then click on Sign, you get all these other waveforms. Okay. Um, now this one here we want something that's called Cry One. Where is that gone? Cry One. That one there, number 59. Okay, and that hasn't worked very good. Well, you can just click on it and drag up whichever one you want. Okay, cry one. Where is it? There it is. Okay, next one minus twenty four. Sorry, enable them. Click them on. Minus twenty four. Leave it on a sawtooth. This other one here. Drag up until you see Vox 3. On there. And uh, minus E6. Just so you know, on the keyboard, I'm not playing middle C, I'm playing the octave above. So, whatever that is, I think. Maybe C4. But anyway, the octave above middle C on, on your keyboard. Um, bring your little triangle here. I don't know. Basically towards the center. Turn this analog up to about halfway. This is fine. What have we got now? Okay. Um, bring the voices, I think, down to four. A bit like that. Okay. Um, we'll give it a little bit of distortion. Well, just about there. Like so. Um, that's pretty much it. The fact that you can go into these ones here, into the sine waves, hit control, click on it, hold, you've got all these, you've got a hundred different waveforms that you can, you didn't know you had. Well, I didn't know I had them for a while. And uh, yeah, so follow those settings there. And then I also did some um, filter envelope here. So we're going to set that up there. Um, envelope 1. So envelope 1 is now routed to cutoff 2. Um, and now you've got that, we should have that more plucky sound, what have we got?
Oh, sorry. Pull the cutoff down. That's what I was looking for. Yeah, there you go. And then all I did is just with, um, automate it with that little clip I showed you. But apart from that, if you've got the decay up. There you go, you've got a lead. And if you want that plucky sound, it's good for automation. Just pull that decay down. Leave it up. You've got yourself a lead. Alright. If you've got any other questions, uh, send them through. So, thank you very much, guys.